everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about Morty Babes, hashtag Morty Babes. Got my nails done this morning, so I feel like a boss. Also, the tan on my hands is really bad. I've been scrubbing off for like four days, and it's the same time I use all the time, but for some reason, this time it just went a little darker. And this is the makeup look. I'm going to try with some crystals I have here. Um, I don't think I have enough black to do it all black, so not 100% sure what I'm going to do, but we'll work it out with it together. So a little disclaimer at the start of this video. So everything I've found is just stuff I found off Google and YouTube um, and different bits and bobs. So if it's not all right, it's not my fault. It's just what I've researched. And Morphe is a company that I've always wanted to do and talk about. And actually I haven't bought any products from them in a long time. So let's talk about them. It's always weird when I first get my nails done, so I was like a, I, do you know what? When you get your nails done and you're like, oh, I wish they were a little bit shorter, but you know, you want to get out, you they want to get on to the next person and you're like, oh, I don't want to say it. And then you get home and you're like, I wish I said it. Anywho, so all the products or most of them will be listed below if I remember to do it. Anyway, let's just get straight into the video. Okay, so we're gonna start off. It's really hard to find out information about Morphe, which I feel like is a just ultimate red flag straight away. I feel like every time I like, Googled and tried to look up stuff, it was really hard to get all the exact information that I needed. Um, but whatever I did find, I wrote down here. The company was founded in 2008 by Linda and Chris, um, and at first they were just a brush company. Um, and actually, until they started doing collaborations, I didn't actually realise they did makeup. I literally thought they were just um, a brush company. Um, because from the first round of like YouTube videos and stuff that I watched, that was all people would promote were the brushes at first private label company and the best way I could describe private labeling where you make a product but you can sell the product someone can buy it and then just put their name on it so in some cases you can change like the color or the style or like the packaging but I think the way the product is made is the cheapest way of buying a new product is to just buy it exactly how a company has already made it and that's how they did it and it's believed that it, they were using crown brushes who has been around like longer than them but we'll get more into like the product comparisons between them and crown in a minute and today the company is worth two billion dollars and i think morphe is a company that's like mac where people are like there's not that much hype around it they're gone downhill they don't make any money they must be going bankrupt but they sell in so many countries and they sell so many different people and they upkeep with you know like new people that are coming into the scene like now collaborating with tiktokers and stuff which we'll get into as well but i think they understand how to upkeep and stay relevant with the new generation of like teens that come out that who will be buying their product so i was obviously the first round of people when they collabed with like jacqueline hill and jeffrey star and money anyway i was around for all that and that's why i bought it because i really wanted to support them but now there's all new people that they collaborate with that i don't care to support because i don't really follow them that much so the first product I'm going to start talking about is the brushes since that's what they were first known for. So the brushes, I don't know if this is like 100% confirmed because um, I couldn't find actual evidence of like the owner of Morphe saying it or like someone saying it as if it as it being factual that they are the exact they are private labeling of crown brushes because crown brushes have been around a lot longer than Morphe can't remember the exact year that crown brush came around, but I know looking when I'm looking it up and I made note that that it was um it was a lot earlier than Morphe came around. Um and when you look at the products, they actually look the exact same. The only difference is the description on the websites are very are very different, not very different, but they'll have like one word difference. One will say real hair, the other one will say it's a different type of hair, or they'll leave out or mix up. The products are the like ingredients and stuff so then moving on to the eyeshadow palettes so again if you look at the eyeshadow palettes and then look at the crown eyeshadow palettes 
they are practically the same product. But when looking it up, because I've never, actually I did own some crown brush products before because I did like this little makeup course back um, before I started college to become a hairdresser. I did a makeup course and I remember some of the products we got were actually from crown brush brushes um there was like a contour palette we got i think there were some brushes from there as well so i have tried their products but i haven't bought any personally myself like i've never actually gone onto their website until i researched for this video but the products themselves are very similar and i'll put up photos of some of the palettes where the colors look so similar and almost the exact same and the only difference is crowns have a mirror and the background of like this bit where the where the colors are is is metallic whether morphe's isn't it's either white or black which i thought was really interesting that crowns is actually a lot prettier looking but also crowns is 19 and morphe is 39 and that's when it comes to like the jacqueline hill palette was what i was at but they, they kind of practically look the exact same. It's called something colourful, I can't remember. But it was something colourful it was called. And I do understand that when obviously um, an influencer or whoever, a celebrity collabs with a brand, that celebrity or whoever has to make some sort of profit as well as the brand. They're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. So I think that's probably why there's such a markup. But for there to be a £20 difference, um, or dollars or whichever um because i always thought um, morphe was okay for the pricing because i have a couple of their palettes um i have this one handy the b the 35b and i'm pretty sure this was around 30 or maybe like 29 or something and i remember thinking um i've used it so much but i remember thinking it's a really good price for what you get considering how much other products are um how, how much other eyeshadow palettes and stuff stuff are and i do think the quality of morphe is quite good so you know i can't knock them for that but it is really interesting like how can they actually sell it at such a markup what did they do that made people justify paying so much and i think it was the influencer culture around it so because like Jacqueline Hill and also I did a video on her I think it's uploaded um the influence that Jacqueline Hill had on the world the influence that people like Jeffrey Star, Manny and Yue, James Charles had that when they told people to buy stuff they did buy it all I'm not going to say I bought everything and I'm not going to say I didn't buy lots of things because I was influenced by all these other people around me and as well when they first started promoting products from, through influencers it wasn't fully known about the affiliate links and stuff so i think that was like hard um when they were like first started promoting things and then when people find out well actually they get paid to promote it change the game completely and i don't think they're no longer private labeling a bit of glue in my i don't think they they no longer private label i think they do own all their own products now which is great for them um, and I think that's just since 2016. So I think for the first like eight years, they were private labeling of crown brushes, although they didn't confirm it, nor did they ever like deny it or whatever. But I suppose they didn't have to come out and say they were private labeling of someone else. The cruelty free. So it's really hard to find. So if you go on their website, they say that they are cruelty free, they don't test on animals, but they sell in China. And I remember finding out about this thing that Mac would say, oh, they're cruelty free, they don't test on animals to sell in the UK or the USA. But in order to sell in China, you have to test on animals for whatever sick reason. I don't get it. Why you have to test on animals? I just think some of the laws in other countries are crazy, but I guess they probably think it's crazy that we don't test on animals. I don't understand it but anyway so if you sell a product in China you have to test on animals and I also remember researching about Mac a little and Mac people were saying oh Mac's dead blah 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 their revenue a year is still extremely high because they sell in places like China and um, most of their money comes from China for selling products and they have to test on animals over there 
Um, and I guess if you're brought up in a culture where it's like, no, it has to be tested on animals, otherwise it's not safe for humans, you would, as a consumer, just presume my product has to be tested, otherwise it's not safe for me if it's not tested on animals. I don't agree with it and I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just trying to understand it in my own head because I don't fully understand or get why they have to. I was really initially introduced to Morphe and Jacqueline, like properly took a look in the product. And when I first started buying from them was in 2017 when the Jacqueline Hill palette came out, the first one. I couldn't tell you what it's called. It's called volume one or something. Um, and then in 2019, I think it was Jen Loves Reviews, I think she was using her friend's palette or something um, and noticed there was something different. I didn't actually look at the video for this, but I just remember it happening um, and saw where the year was, but saying that the pigments were slightly different and she wondered why. I think she said it had slightly like been improved, but I think it came out when they like did a second round of it. 2019 so when it came out 2017 then they said we're coming out with the palette again and it's been improved in 2019 there was something about there was something about the palette being like different um and so Jen loves re reviewed it um oh it was the same as crowned oh my god palette that was it so actually you know what i'm gonna do the snake off the camera just because I'm using paint and I can't talk and concentrate at the same time. Um, so I'll be back in two seconds. I started to put little gems on. Um, I'm just using the glue that they come with, so I'm hoping that they stick. So it's really annoying. I have to put like each little black diamond separately. And in my mind, I had better diamonds already, so I didn't bother picking up more when I was out this morning or anything. So I'm like really annoyed that I have to cut them all. But anyway, we digress. One point I didn't make earlier that I think is probably a good point to make is that there is a website called Cruelty Free Kitty. And this website, you can basically go on and, go and check and see if your brand is on it. And when you check more on there, they say they can't, they're not sure if they are fully cruelty free. They can't yay or nay it because that's because of the fact that they sell in China. Um, I just thought that could have been like a handy little point to know. When it got updated or improved, they say, it is, um, they added car carmen which is a dye from crushed up beetles, which essentially would mean that the palette is not cruelty free or vegan. But when they updated this, they obviously didn't add, add that, they added it to the ingredient list, but they still kept it saying that it was like vegan and cruelty free and everything. But obviously if you crush up a beetle, which is a living creature, creature it does not mean that it's cruelty free anymore. Um, and I remember when this was happening, there was like uproar about it because Jacqueline came out saying that she didn't know that it was going to have the crushed up beetle in it. And I think it was really sad for like some of her followers and stuff because, you know, they trusted her and they would buy it again to support her because it was like coming out with a new and improved um, palette, with new improved formula. I think people were just really upset and offended that it was no longer vegan and it wasn't actually stated that it was no longer vegan so i think that's what annoyed people more than anything that it, they didn't lie they just weren't very honest about what was actually happening um and i think another real concern for people was the being allergic to it as well because obviously if you are allergic to that ingredient you would never think of it presuming that you might be allergic because you'd obviously make sure everything you get is vegan or cruelty free or whatever you know doesn't have that ingredient in it. So then getting on to the hashtag Morphe babe time. Um, so if you were on YouTube, Instagram around 2015, 16, you will know the hashtag Morphe babe was absolutely everywhere and um, everyone just promoted Morphe this, Morphe that. I mean, Jacqueline was the main person for it, but I think there were so many influencers at the time that promoted Morphe because of the affiliate link and the affiliate codes. 
so a hashtag Morphe Babe, as we know it's everywhere and they still use that tag line, it still works for them. Um, but I remember at the whole hype of Morphe and everything, everywhere you went it was just hashtag Morphe Babe, um, use my discount code Jack Tack, use my discount code Jackie Star, use my discount code Amani MUA or whatever. Everyone had a discount code and it was around this time as well um, that it came to be that it was people were making money off the discount code because before this, although at the time I did say this in my Jocelyn Hill video, I did kind of think that they were making money off it, it kind of made sense um, but I don't think people realised actually how much money they were making off it. So then it kind of felt like a scam because it felt like they were only promoting Morphe because um they could make money off it which i don't think was the case because i do think morphe products are all right um i think just the hype around them has gone down so it's kind of turned me off buying them personally um as vain and all of that sounds but their instagram and stuff still has like lots of followers and they still get plenty of likes and everything so i think they are still relevant but i think they're trying to move on to the tiktok generation they're trying to get away from the people that like youtube and stuff um and honestly i can't remember the last time charlie and dixie d'amelio was the last time they had like a big release but before that i think it had been a while since they had like a proper release with um someone quite big they did come out with, like foundations and things but i don't remember them being as big um and there is rumors as well that they are kind of like an umbrella for certain influencers like uh jeffrey stars that he is kind of has his hand in the morphe umbrella james charles potentially has his hand in the uh, morphe umbrella um, and when dramageddon was happening they actually dropped james charles so they had like his massive collab with the arts the art palace palette and i remember when that palette came out it was everywhere, everyone was loving it. He did loads of different looks on YouTube to kind of promote the product, to promote the palette. And I remember all these looks, everyone was recreating them. It was just a done thing at the time when someone brought out a palette. And I don't remember at the time there being anything particularly bad about the palette being said or anything. I think everyone really liked the palette and loved everything about it. So I don't think there was anything really worth noting that it was like a bad product although that is when the talk about counterfeit was real hyped up as well because um it was like talked about that counterfeit you can't prove that it's actually got good ingredients and you know they obviously just copy and paste what the morphe one has on it so if they actually don't include proper products or ingredients in it it's like a big deal and i think it is rumored as well james charles is now talking about bringing out his own product but I have seen some videos where people have said that they think that he was bringing one out under the Morphe umbrella and then Morphe dropped him so they don't want to be associated with him at all which would make sense for them as a brand at the time and I don't think James has really got back his real popularity and his real fame that he once had so I think they were probably good to drop him at the time I think everyone should just think I just think it doesn't, it doesn't bring like a lot of the, I don't think it brings a lot to the table. I don't know if I've already posted my video about um, James Charles or not yet, but uh, there's always just been something about him that I haven't particularly liked. So I'm just going to go off camera, put on lashes, straighten my hair, and then I'll be back to do my final thoughts about Morphe Bay. So I popped on some peaches and creams lashes and added a little bit of orange to my lips just to complement the orange on this side of the snake but we'll just quickly finish off the video. So Morphe 2 was the D'Amelio Sisters which was light makeup for TikTokers because at the time it was all about a light based, you know, like a young girl, teenager style and the girls were just the face of it. So I don't think they had any say in production, any say in the in the style and I think there's so many products that some TikTokers, TikTokers have been involved in that they have no idea what they're actually selling or promoting. They just know they're gonna get a big check at the end of it. And 
I don't know if I blame them because they're so young. It's more like I kind of blame the parents or like the managers, who's ever in charge of them. And then today, Morphe still has 10 million followers on Instagram. But it was interesting when I looked back on like some of their photos in the last like couple of weeks, they kind of get around 3,000 likes, which for 10 million followers, you would like to think it's at least 100,000 likes a photo, but I think back to the day they were getting that 10% plus likes per post because people love them and would support whoever shared. If you got shared on Morphe Babe, you know what I mean? It was a big deal if you were shared in their account on Instagram. So I think now no one really cares. So they still have 47 stores worldwide today, which is still a lot of stores. In 2019, they were worth 500 million and today they are worth 2.2 billion. So um, I think that's the thing is, although we're not talking about it this side of the world, they are still selling in other parts of the world. They're still making their coin and their money. So I think it's one of them things, they've done a lot of shady things. Um, but all in all, I don't think they're particularly the worst brand ever from looking at other brands. And I mean, the next person I'm going to be doing a video on is actually Kat Von D. So I always wondered what happened to her. Why did, why did everyone hate her so much? When I actually researched it, I was like, oh, I get it. This is why I'm not meant to like her. And I don't really like her now that I've researched it all. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoy my little snake creation. Um, I don't know why I picked it. I think in my mind I was like, oh, snake for Morphe. Because they're snakes. But I don't know if they are snakes. I feel a bit bad saying that. Because although there was a lot of bad stuff, I just think... They didn't sell products that were like harmful, but they just, they, well, harmful as in they didn't say that they changed the ingredients. People could be allergic to it and stuff. But um, I think if companies are just more truthful, they might get less revenue, but they might get more consistent revenue. But again, they're worth 2.2 billion. So, I mean, what can you say about that? But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video.